Sup dogs, how you doing? DOD here and welcome back to our creation. So last off, we learned about what exactly horror is and how we can correlate it into our RPG Maker game. And then we learned the basics of RPG Maker for a horror puzzle game. So now we're finally ready to jump into our project. Are you guys ready to start learning? Well, wait for another day. <laughs> because first of all, we will actually have to understand exactly what our game is. What are we making and what are the things that we're going to try and learn. And the best way to start off is through, well, text. I like to document all the minds in a Word doc or maybe Microsoft OneDrive, doesn't really matter. But I would highly recommend putting all of your initial thoughts into some sort of document. This way, as you progress along with what you're creating, you will remember exactly what it was that you first thought about. And then you could take those ideas and reconsider them. Were they really a good idea? Were they a bad idea? Because along the way, you will start to make changes in your game. And these changes are actually the part where it can actually be destructive or more constructive. So that is why you want to have this document ready for you. That way you know exactly what your initial idea was, if it's something you should continue to follow, or is it something that you should work upon. Alrighty? So, <clears throat> as we continue down our document, you will see that, hey, we got this huge block of text and then the type of puzzles we're going to make. Okay, now before we actually start dissecting our document, I want you guys to know that these documents are ready and available for you. you all you gotta do is open up your favorite web browser, Hopefully it's Google Chrome. And all you gotta do is type I am the Odie.blogspot.com. It's also in the descriptions down below. Click on RPG Puzzle Horror Special. Make your way over to down here. As you can see, there's two types of downloads. Uh, I don't know why that's black. I'll make it white later. But there's two types of downloads. There's a the Theody version, and then there's your version. The Odie's version is the finished version of what we're going to make. So I would recommend clicking this and playing through it, getting an idea and understanding on what it is you're going to go through, or if you're waiting to be surprised to see how you do and then to see what I do, then you can save that till the end of this series, okay? So right here is our game bio and purpose. This is the exact same document that's in this Word document that you're going to see here. It will also be included in your version when you click and download here, it will actually take you to my Google Drive file. And because of that, it will ask, the viruses can't be scanned, the potential danger, but I promise you there's no viruses. Okay, guys, don't worry. There's no viruses. Trust me. Okay? Trust me. <laughs> so yeah, just click it. It will kick you all the way over to here. Click download. Download anyway. Then you're gonna see that it starts downloading there, but I already got the file because I made it. Duh. <laughs> okay. So, other than that, let's get to this. So, in a Word document, you'll see that I started off with a story. And you're probably gonna wonder is this the same type of thing you would read in the back of a book? Is this like a synopsis? What is this exactly? Well, to be honest, the way you would create this is however you like. The way I create it is that at first, yeah, I did attempt to make a synopsis, but then I started getting more ideas and more feeling for what's going to go on in this story. And because of that, I decided to get more into like dialogue. So basically, when you make your story or your prologue, you want to make, you want to give yourself an overall idea. But hey, if you're getting inspired, if you're getting these other ideas for it, or these scenes or moments that you want to have in your game, then do jog it down, because these are something that you will want to look back upon. And by looking back upon this, it definitely did help me develop this game and reach to the end goal. So, what exactly is this game? Well, let's check out the story. It's 1991. School is almost ending and the kids are all excited. Everyone except for 17 years old Jake Witherfield, that is. Every day, Jace comes to school looking as depressed as the last day. It's no shocker, though. He lives with an abusive stepfather on the edge of the country, and everybody knows it. People have tried to talk to him, but he has always turned them down, even his best friend, Eric Stikers. One day, he came into school with an eye patch over his right eye, and he instantly became the topic of the morning. 
The day passed by, and Eric tried to comfort him, suggesting them to just walk about town and avoid the need to return home. However, Jake only knew this would cause more trouble for him. He decided to head home. The next day, he didn't show up to school. Eric decided to bring his homework to him, also piqued by his curiosity as to meet his father in person. When Eric arrived at Jake's house, things felt odd. His run-down country house was dead silent. There wasn't even birds to chirp anywhere nearby. Eric approached the house and chose to knock, having not found a doorbell. A few seconds later, the door slowly creaked open, revealing a whitened face, Jake. Hey. Jake barely let out. <laughs> hey, stuttered Eric. Um, I, I have your homework. Oh. Thanks, Jake replies without even once blinking. Eric lifted his hand slowly, holding Jake's homework. Jake responded by slowly reaching to the homework, grabbing it, and lowering his hand to his side, all without losing eye contact from Eric. Eric struggled to find any words to ease the situation, but couldn't find any. Bye. Jake lowly lets out as he slowly closes the door. Eric stood for a moment to what felt silent, now additionally felt cold. Everything around Eric felt out of motion. Time was frozen. After a few moments, Eric moved down to the front of Jake's street. He stared at the house for a while longer before telling himself that something had gone wrong. For the sake of his friend, he decided to come back that night to discover what it was that his father has done. Dun 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 dun! <laughs> <laughs> so I'll admit, it's a little bit of a typical horror idea, where there's an abusive father, where there's two best friends, and then where the one friend that wants to try and save the other makes a terrible idea of wanting to come back later that night. And my only excuse for making such a story is, well, when you create a story or create a game, you want it to have a simple story. Try not to make a cliche. I'll admit mine was cliche, but the only reason it was cliche was because I wanted to finish this in time for you guys so we can learn how to make the correct puzzles for a horror game. And that's my whole reason for it. <laughs> but when it's time for you to make your own horror game that you want to publish, Try to be as original as possible without making it overly complicated. The idea to making a game is to be able to explain your game to somebody in 5 minutes. Alright? That's the goal. If you can't do it, then your game's a bit too complicated and you want to simplify the story a bit. Alrighty? Alrighty. So the type of puzzles we're going to make is, obviously there's Jake's house and we want to make our way into the basement somehow, however, how should we do this? So we're going to start off outside and we're going to try and make our way. We're going to start off outside, and we're going to try and make our way down to the basement. And you want to start off your puzzles rather simple or easy. This way you can ease your player into the game's difficulty. Similar to building up horror, where you can't just have a jump scare immediately. You have to have that tension. You have to start off simple and then make it more difficult. That way your player won't rage quit at the beginning, and then your game will eventually get a harsh strike. Say, hey, this game was too hard. I only give it five minutes and it was so difficult, it's not worth your time. You don't want that, okay? So start off easy, make it a little bit more difficult. And the easiest type of puzzles for the most part is a search quest. You look for these items and you bring it to where they need to go. Search quest, very easy. So next up is a box push maze. This is more visual. It will be similar to games such as Push Push or those box pushing games where you have to make your way to the end, unblock me for example. So. It's more visual, it requires a little more thinking, but not a lot. Mainly because the one I made was very simple. <laughs> Code Decipher. This is more logical. It regards more to thinking about what it is that's going on and how you should solve it. And there's some visual aspects as to you will decipher it with your eyes and then you convert it to your own thinking. So yeah, Code Decipher. In our case, we're going to be deciphering uh, Braille. Okay. And the last thing I will teach you guys is the art of a chase sequence, what every horror game have. And I know what you guys are thinking, Theody, chase sequences are cliche. Everybody hates chase sequences now. Well, true, but it also depends on the context of it. If you were able to build your game up properly, then the chase sequences will feel adequate or they will feel appropriate such that it's well deserved and what goes on in this chase sequence is fair, okay? And I emphasize unfair. <laughs> if you make your chase sequence unfair, then your players will rage quit and then 
Same story. You'll get a negative review for your game. Remember, by the end of the day, remember who you're making your game for. Is it for yourself or for your audience? So with all this done and covered, just remember, when you make a puzzle horror game, it's going to slowly increase in difficulty. And go to imdod.blogspot.com. Click on RPG Puzzle Horror Special so you can find the download of this game as well as read the bio here. This bio is also in your version, that way you can edit it for yourself or make whatever changes you want in the future. And other than that, your homework for today, yeah that's right, you guys got homework, you guys actually gotta work off screen to learn on your own just a little bit, but trust me, you wanna learn on your own. When it comes to creating your own game, learning on your own is the number one thing to do. You guys are gonna open your version and then this should pop up. What I want you guys to do is to go through it, go through every single map, look at it, get a vibe from our story, what each map is for, or what each map could possibly be about, and then click on a few of these things even, just examine it, dissect it, see what goes on, what makes it click, what makes it tick, and other than that, I'll see you in the next part where we actually start programming our game. Everything in the descriptions down below if you need anything. If you guys been enjoying this series, do remember to like, comment, and uh, subscribe for more. Alrighty. This is the Yodi saying, keep RPG. <laughs> I'm actually gonna go with that. Alright, ciao. We're gonna have them situated here as to where, well, on this map, what exactly do we want to do?